gonna shove it. Yeah! He's gonna shove it. Shove it! Shove it, squad. Welcome to your additional jab to the jaw for the week. This time we're gonna be doing a Patreon request by Derek Jeff. If you wanna make the Hawk talk, sign up today. Today's video isn't gonna be like one of my normal videos. In fact, it's gonna be a very abnormal video. This won't be a Ring of the Hawk video because today's video is a wrestler who is more of a character than a respected wrestler. Also, the run we're looking at today wasn't really on a main show. It's Enzo Amore and we're going to be looking back at his run as Cruiserweight Champion in 2017. I was flat out not interested in the WWE product at the time. Didn't watch the show, just flat out didn't care. But I did catch the odd thing on YouTube and it was always Enzo Amore. This guy had prey mobility straight out of the Attitude Era, and I was impressed. He had the ability to hold the fans' attentions, be funny, and he stood out. I thought the guy looked like a star, and I couldn't understand why it wasn't a bigger deal in the WWE. His promo ability was the best I'd seen in years. I hadn't seen him wrestle, though. I'm aware that a large portion of the YouTube wrestling community hate Enzo. I'm also aware that several of his fellow cruiserweights legit hated him, but the Hawk's gonna make his own mind up. And yes, there are some allegations which we can talk about at the end of the video. All right, it's Enzo Amore and 205 Live. Did he make the ratings dive? This cruiserweight run starts out after the fairly successful team of Big Cass and Enzo Amore split up. Amore was shipped off to 205 Live, a cruiserweight show that I've definitely never watched. He apparently had nuclear heat in the WWE locker room due to his big mouth. This was a case of two birds, one brick though, because 205 Live was failing and Vince McMahon thought, let's send Enzo to the show and make it more popular. He debuted on the show, interrupting the champion Neville. The crowd sounded asleep, but as soon as Amore's music hits, they went nuts and they all chanted along with his entertaining promo. This guy was so popular with not just kids, but also adults. You don't get that often. The charisma black hole, which is Neville, had nothing he could say in response and he left as Amore called him soft. So that establishes that the certified G is going after his belt. It seemed that the WWE knew his lack of ring ability would stand out against the other cruiserweights, so they made him work smarter, not harder as his gimmick. Within two weeks, Enzo had become the number one contender for Neville's belt, and all his wins had been sneaky roll-ups whilst his opponents tried to kill themselves with high-flying moves. Neville vs Amore took place at No Mercy 2017, and strangely this match went on second to last. The pre-match promo is good though, of Enzo coming up with creative ways to call Neville ugly, and there's a lot of them. I love listening to this guy tear his opponents apart on the mic. They all look super annoyed. I've never heard a pay-per-view crowd so quiet for a match though. They loved it when Enzo had the mic, but now he's in the ring getting beaten up. I think he's supposed to be a scrappy babyface, sort of like Spike Dudley. Despite this, the crowd do start to come around to him eventually. He boots Neville in the slash zone when the ref's back is turned to win the belt. And wow, did the online crowd dump all over this. Enzo was on Raw the following night, having a title win celebration. In fact, he continued to appear on Raw sporadically along with 205 Live. It's like Raw knew he was an amazing entertainer, but management still hated him. Booker T said 205 YouTube views had gone through the roof from 200,000 to over a million since Enzo had been on the show. So that Vinny Mac plan seems to be paying back. His celebration segment got the main event slot on Raw. I really like this promo. He's like the anti-internet wrestling fan. He acknowledges that the crowd chant, you can't wrestle at him, and says they did the same thing to The Rock, Cena and Batista. And it's all about being a star like them. This guy gets it. The 305 Cruiserweights came out to interrupt his promo and Enzo completely rips into all of them. They all just stand there looking sad as they get destroyed on the mic. This was essentially a heel turn for him as he claimed he didn't care about any of the Cruiserweight nerds and they would need to thank him later when more people start watching 205 Live and the nerds become stars. Neville wanted to beat him up but Enzo reveals he's been given protection from Kurt Angle. If anyone touches Enzo, they'll lose their title shot. He continued destroying the 205 Live geeks by letting them know that this was the main event and they could never dream of being in this position if it wasn't for him. He's the star and they all suck. Neville decides he doesn't care about that and he beats up Enzo, so no title shots for him. The rest of the roster and Braun Strowman for some reason also beat him up, so I guess no title shots for anybody. I'm loving all these Lord of the Ring comparisons to Neville. The only person who seems to like Enzo was Sheikh Abdul Bashir's half-nephew, Aria Davari. They have an ass-kissing relationship. Enzo Amore continued feuding with the entire 205 Live roster. He had another segment where he individually tore them apart with insults whilst they looked on sad and able to do anything. This is a really good one, I'm sure you've seen it on YouTube. Unfortunately for Enzo, a new cruiserweight was signed to the roster, and as he hadn't been involved with the beatdown on Enzo, he was eligible for a title shot. This was Kalisto. Enzo continued to be able to get his lines over with the crowd, but one thing he couldn't get over was calling 205 Live the Zo Show. This line was met with nothing but silence but he kept trying it, bless him. The Cruiserweight Champion was still getting multiple segments on Raw as well. Someone clearly fought a lot of him. Unfortunately, the rest hated him. He once again got the Raw main event slot, but it was now a lumberjack match. It was his first title defense since winning the belt two weeks before. This match was a lot funner than the last, but it still wasn't the sort of action 205 Live fans expected to see. Good thing it was on Raw then. Enzo lost the match, so a terrible title reign with zero defense in his time as the champion. 
but at least he elevated the title somewhat. Enzo formed a nice relationship with Aria Davari and he seemed to be trying hard to get him over. He gave Davari some chains and talked him up during his entrance. He called him Davari De Niro. Unfortunately, no one could ever see this guy as anything other than Sheikh Abdul Bashir's grandson. The title rematch was set for the next pay-per-view. I just love this guy's promo so much. People say Enzo is repetitive, but they're wrong. I've heard him come up with so many different insults, he's made me laugh a bunch. What do you expect him to say? The Rock and the New Age Outlaws does similar things on their way to the ring all the time. There's a reason that continuity is important on any TV show, and Enzo gets it. He gets this business. He looks intense and energetic during his promo. Unfortunately, you then realise it's Enzo Amore. He says at the pay-per-view he's sending Kalisto to a children's hospital. He talks a big game for a man who's barely won a match on 205 Live. But on to that important match, his title rematch at TLC 2017. It's clear the crowd don't care about Kalisto. Enzo is the only one who can get noise out of them. The crowd go nuts as Enzo pokes Kalisto in the eyelid and rolls him up to become a two-time champion. I know he's not the greatest in the ring, but this match was the first one where I actually saw a botch. I thought I was going to see a lot more of them. Things get really strange now. Enzo starts his own faction, adding to Davari, and he calls it the Zo Train. And this thing massively highlights what geeks the 205 live roster were. I guess they figured if they can't beat him, join him. Okay, so be fair, Drew Gulek is pretty funny in this role. Still a geek though. Enzo was giving them all the chance to speak, and at times it looked like he was giving them promo advice on the spot. These sort of matches I wouldn't normally give two turds about, but Enzo being here makes me want to see what happens. And that's the point, Enzo appeals to the casual fans, but not the internet fans. Enzo got himself DQ'd in his title rematch with Kalisto in a hilarious way, so he kept his belt, but this one wasn't over. In fact, the only place he didn't seem to be at over was the UK, because we're an island of geeks, 95% of men here could be backup presenters on twat culture. I have to say though, a lot of guys got chances on TV due to Enzo's mic time and ability to get a segment over. I doubt many of these guys would have got any chances without Enzo. I mean, who would have thought Aria Davari would be in the main event segment on Raw? Enzo had his final pay-per-view match at Survivor Series 2017 as Kalisto tried to take the belt again. Unfortunately, the match was drop-kicked onto the pre-show. This was his least sneaky win against Kalisto, but it was still no more than an average match. Not much was really going on after the pay-per-view. The Zoe train continued for a few more weeks before Tony Nese was kicked out of the group. It seemed like Cedric Alexander was being built up to take the belt from Enzo. They had a title match, and during the match, Cedric dived out of the ring and crushed Enzo's leg, leading to a count-out victory, but the belt remained with Enzo. This actually turned out to be Amore's final televised match in WWE. They also seemed to be starting to build up a relationship on Raw between Enzo and Nia Jax. This was supposed to be a love triangle with petrified rat Alexa Bliss involved. He continued to appear on 205 Live throughout January, but he wasn't competing in matches due to his apparent ankle injury. It was actually the flu, I believe. A show in late January opened up with yet another nerd, Daniel Bryan. I can feel you frantically smashing that keyboard right now. Don't you dare. And this nerd announces that Enzo Amore has vacated the Cruiserweight title. And that's the actual point where Enzo's run ends in the WWE. Very inconvenient timing because now two storylines would go unfinished. The Love Triangle and the Zoe Train faction. But we have to give WWE a pass this time because it wasn't their fault. A woman had accused Enzo of rape and that was never going to fly for the WWE. Enzo was never convicted of this in the end and the case was dropped six months later due to insufficient evidence. I do wonder if this is where a lot of the Enzo hate comes from. It doesn't help Enzo that a lot of the more geeky wrestlers have spoken out about Enzo during shoot interviews and they don't have much in the way of positives to say about him. The Hawk says innocent until proven guilty. I think some of those guys were just jealous. Look, I've seen friends be accused of things by women and it turned out to be false, so you never know. Enzo retired from wrestling to become a rapper, but has since resurfaced in Major League Wrestling this year. This was a really enjoyable video to make. His promos are great fun and everything he said about the nerds was true. I loved how he was the opposite to an internet wrestling fan. It's nice to hear that Davari spoke positively about Enzo, saying he was trying to help get the younger guys over as much as he could, and Davari liked him. Enzo was great for the casual viewer. He's the sort of person whose promo would get views on YouTube. Vince's plan to boost viewership on the show only sort of worked with a minor jump in viewership on the network for 205 Live. I still hold the same opinion I had going into this video. This guy could have been wrestling's next big star, and I think he could have gone on to do movies. His wrestling definitely let him down though, it's a shame he couldn't have mastered a style. An Eddie Guerrero cheating gimmick could have worked for him, or let's see him take some hardcore wrestling bumps. Either would have been fitting. Sadly, his in-ring work couldn't back up his amazing promos. The whole 205 Live TV show was built around him with multiple segments each week. His own faction, his own talk show, a love angle. WWE clearly knew he was a bird turd in the ring and tried to keep him as occupied as possible away from the ring. Whilst his Cruiserweight title suited his gimmick, his gimmick didn't suit the Cruiserweight title. This was supposed to be a division with crazy high flying moves and Enzo just couldn't do it. As I said, it could have worked out if he had a wrestling style. So whilst I enjoyed this, he didn't make a good champion. He was a bad fit. 
And if you don't agree with that, I'll beat your ass until you can't sit.